bold in her. The Lord will give her fresh vision in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Greetings to you, sir. Pastor, the Lord bless you. God be with you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I never, never forsake your humble beginning. Never forsake your humble beginning. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Never forsake your humble beginning. It is the foundation to greater things to come. The Lord keep you. Pastor, his grace be upon you. And Pastor, Mrs., the Lord bless you. In the name of Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus that every prayer you say will be from your mouth to the ears of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will never be forsaken. Um, all elders of this church, thank you for wonderful work. Every time I come here, I see something different, something new. Hallelujah. I pray for you that newness will never cease in your life in Jesus' name. You will be reflourished, replenished, re-energized. God will grant you the information from heaven. Because that's all you need. It's just information from heaven. The Lord bless you indeed in the name of Jesus Christ. Tonight I want to say good evening and congratulations to all the men of honor. Hallelujah. I believe they're the ones that we have come to celebrate tonight. The men of honor. Amen. Amen. Are we ready for the word? Are we ready? Um, I've been asked to speak to you tonight on a sermon titled God's Battle Axe. The Battle Axe of God. And our undergarden scripture for this uh, three-day event is from Jeremiah 51. 20 to 23. Would you please join me in standing up as we bring in the word of the Lord. The Lord bless you as you do so. Shall we please rise? We'll read it together if it can be projected for us. Um, I'll start and then we'll just uh, catch up. This is God speaking to Jeremiah. He says, you are my battle axe and weapons of war. For with you I will break the nations in pieces. With you, I will destroy kingdoms. With you, I will break in pieces the horse and its riders. With you, Jeremiah, I will break in pieces the chariot and its rider. With you also, I will break in pieces men and women. With you, I will break in pieces the old and the young. With you, I will break in pieces the young man and the maiden. With you also, I will break in pieces the shepherd and his flock. With you, Jeremiah, I will break in pieces the farmer and his yoke of oxen. And with you, men of honor of the city of the Lord Church, God is saying to you that I will break in pieces governors and rulers in the name of Jesus Christ. That is the word of the Lord. May the Lord accept his word and bless his word to the edification of our souls. Put your hands together as you please take your seat. The Lord is God. Let me go in quickly because I don't have much time. I think I've been given 30 minutes um, to speak the word. I think I've probably used about nine and a half minutes already. Bless the name of the Lord. City of the Lord, church, there are certain things that we must get straight right off the bat. About three things that we must get straight just as we even get started. Number one is that there is a battle to fight. What is number one, somebody? And let me also encourage you to please get your pen and write these things down. Because I will be asking you as I go along. Amen. What is number one again? In some cases, the battles of mankind are battles that he knows not a, nothing about. <laughs> battles that preceded his conception. And we call them generational battles. Or multi-generational battles. Amen. The other battles in the life of a man are the battles 
beloved, of his own making. A battle that is brought about by the man himself. The one that he invited into his life or into her life. The third category you can call the battle of his days of ignorance. I pray if there's anyone that has been dining at the dining table of satanic ignorance, I pray God will overturn that table in the name of Jesus. I was hoping you say better amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Multi generational battle. The case, the, the recent case that I can, I can remember is the, is the story of Whitney Houston. We all know who, who Whitney Houston was. Started in church, one of the best tune of our time. Sang like an angel. But then life had it that she meandered her ways into using drugs. And she entered into a battle as a demon was introduced into her life. After fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting, eventually she overdosed on drugs. She was found in the bathtub and died in the bathtub. A couple of years later, our only child, the only daughter, who was supposed to enjoy the entire empire, died the same way. Spiritual warriors call that kind of battle like father, like mother syndrome, like father, like son syndrome, or like mother, like daughter syndrome. Tell your neighbor there's a battle to fight. Number two things that we need to get right off the bat is that God is a warrior. Every one of us thinks that God is this gentleman in heaven that is just giving out blessing, but God is a warrior. Exodus 15 and 3. Exodus 15, 3 says, the Lord is a man of war. <laughs> the Lord is his name. Come and tell your neighbor, the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Psalm 27, I mean Psalm 24, verses 7 and 8. Psalm 24, verses 7 and 8. It says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, that the King of glory shall come in. And then the question went out in verse 8. It says, who is this king of glory? And the answer came and said, read with me please. The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Timothy. Paul the apostle Paul wrote to his son Timothy. In 1 Timothy 6 and 12. 1 Timothy 6 and 12. He says, my son Timothy, fight the good fight of faith. There is a fight to be had. <laughs> fight the good fight of faith. And listen to this. Deuteronomy 32. This is God introducing himself and talking about what he will do. Deuteronomy 32. We're going to start from verse 39. God says, now see that I, even I, Deuteronomy 32, we we'll start from verse 20, 39, I'm sorry. 32, 39. It says, now see that I, even I, I am he. <laughs> and there's no God besides me. Read the next one with me, please. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes. Tell your neighbor, God is a warrior. Uh, I don't want to scare anybody, but God is a killer. It's a massive, mighty weapon of mass destruction is God. Especially to the rebellious nation. He says, I, even I am here, there is no God beside me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Hallelujah. And who can deliver from me? Verse 40 says, for I raise my hand to heaven and say, as I God live forever, if I wet my uh, a glittering sword and my heart takes hold of the judgment, I will render vengeance to my enemies. I pray in the name of Jesus, on the day of the vengeance of God, you will not be anywhere there. You will not be there. He says, I will render vengeance to my enemy and repay those who hate me. He says, say it again. I want you to just, just know. I will render. Just say to your neighbor, say, say neighbor. 
God is a warrior. Let me move on because of time. Number three things that you must know tonight is that every warrior has an instrument of warfare. Amen? As I speak to you right now, I'm using an instrument. It's called a microphone. Amen? Police officers use guns. Armies use machine gun, And Navy use their plane. But God has some magnificent, amen, weapon by which he fights his battle that you cannot even fathom. God has a stockpile of weapon. Hallelujah. So when he wants you to be his battle axe, consider yourself blessed. Because he, he, use, he, can use the, the, he can use anything. He can use anyone. The Lord bless us in the name of Jesus Christ. He has a lot of weapon at his disposal. And the survival strategy for this battle that I just told you about, amen, for this time, for this end time, is the ability to know what weapon to bring to your battle. Many people, when it came to, to a gun battle, they bring a knife. Amen. And they say, I'm fully loaded. I have a knife here. I have a knife here. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. But the battle demands a gun. And we don't fight like the world fights. The scripture says, although we are in the world, hallelujah, although we are in the flesh, but we do not war after the flesh. The weapons of our warfare are carnal and mighty through Christ to the pulling down of strongholds. The survival strategy for this end time is to know what, what, what kind of weapon to bring to battle. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Just briefly, just let me mention maybe about five, or maybe four or five. Some of God's weapon for you. So you know that God, <laughs> come on, somebody say God. God. Say it louder, say God. God. The beginning and the end. <laughs> Hallelujah. One weapon of God is the weapon of fire. The weapon of the weapon of uh, we're going to do this together, church. So help us, help me here. The first weapon that we're going to discuss is the weapon of fire. fire. When God has had enough of Sodom and Gomorrah, he has won them. And the sin and the unrighteousness of Sodom and Gomorrah has gotten to this level for God. He cannot take it anymore. Amen. He decided to settle the score. And the Bible says he sent down fire. And the fire burned everything down. And God sat in heaven and was looking at the destructive fire. Pursuing the unrighteous Sodomites and the people of Gomorrah. On top of Mount Carmel, when God has had enough of the prophets of Baal and the prophet of Asherah, 450 prophets of Asherah, 400 prophets of Baal, came against the man of God by the name of Elijah. Elijah said, if I be the man of God, hallelujah. He says, oh God, let it be known today, who is the real God? As soon as he said it, fire fell. Fire fell, the enemy took off. The enemy took off. Elijah commanded, Oh heavens, arrest them. Number two weapon is the weapon of death. Beloved, I have to do this quickly because of time. The weapon of death. Pharaoh thought God was playing games. He didn't realize that God has had enough. And by the time Pharaoh realized it, it was too late. The Lord said to Moses, Moses, listen, you are getting out tonight. <laughs> he says, I will walk through the land of Egypt. Hallelujah. For the, his own sons, he conducted a night vigil and walked through the land of Egypt. It is my prayer that if there's any power from the second heaven tormenting your activity and your capacity on earth, I pray that God will walk through their land in the name of Jesus Christ. And the next thing they knew, midnight, <laughs> by midnight, at midnight, 
The Bible says there was not a house where there was not a dead person. All the firstborn of the of Pharaoh, all the way to even the slaves, all the firstborn died. You know what? Even their cattle, the firstborn of the cattle died. God is a warrior. The third one I want to share with you is the weapon of water. And we know what God did with water. Hallelujah. During the time of Noah, there was rain. He told them God will never strike without telling first. But he talked to them and talked to them and they were obstinate. They were stiff-necked. They were hard-headed. And then the Lord said, Noah, build an, build an ark for me. He built an ark. He went in there, he invited everybody and they didn't come. Consider yourself blessed because you are in this ark tonight. And then God has had enough and then he decided to open the heavens and the rain started. The people thought it was a joke. The first day, the second day, the first week, the second week, the third week. For 40 days there was rain. The Bible said that there was rain that went all the way to about 15 cubic feet. That's 22 and a half feet of water staying upon the land. Everything upon the rock, upon the mountain died. Everything in the valley died because God does not fight to lose. God never fights to lose. The first one that I want to quickly talk to you about is the weapon of the hook. Come on, somebody said the hook. When you want to go fishing, you buy a line, then you put a hook on top of it, right? And then you put the hook in, and then you reel it, and then the fish come. I know most Nigerians don't go fishing. We just buy our fish from Old World Market. Bless the name of the Lord. Why go fishing when you can buy it from Old World Market? Hallelujah. Amen. Ejakila Jerry. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. But the hook, the hook, the hook. The Lord has had enough of this king called Gog from Magog. God told him and it will not change. And the Lord said to Ezekiel, tell him, tell him Ezekiel, in Ezekiel 38, 1 to 4. But I just want to go straight to verse 4 because of the time. He says, I will turn you around. And I will put hooks in your jaw. And lead you out with all of your army. And all your horses and horsemen and splendidly, those who, who are ready for battle. Amen. I will send my hook and I will hook them on the jaw. And I will drag them out of the land. And I will put an end to their existence. And that is just because God is dealing with one person. But if God has to deal with a group of people, he has another weapon called the net. When you use a hook, you only catch one fish at a time. Hallelujah. You think that fishermen during the time of Peter just found out about the net. No, no, no. God is the original owner of the net. Hallelujah. Or you can call it the drag net. In Ezekiel 17, 19 to 20, listen to what he says to his own son, Israel. Because Israel decided to turn his back against God. God is a father. He said, therefore, thus says the Lord God, as I live, surely my oath which he despised, talking about Israel, my covenant which he broke, I will recompense upon it. To recompense me, I will take vengeance upon his own head. And verse 20, he says, I will spread my net over him. Hallelujah. And he shall be taken in my snare. I will bring him to Babylon, the land of the hidden. Hallelujah. A father turning over control of his children to the hidden. Because the children have decided not to listen anymore. And the Yoruba says, Amen. But God says, I will hand him over to Babylon. And I will try him there for what? For what offense? For what offense? Which he committed. You will not commit treason against God in Jesus' name. Let's move forward. That's just five of them I've just, I've just told you. But God has some, <laughs> some scary weapon when it comes to battle. And he knows which one to apply. 
Men of honor, please hear me well. God is a skillful warrior. And I know it's the leading of the Holy Spirit that brought about the sermon topic for this year. God's battle us. God is looking for an army. He's looking for a people. He's looking for some men who will say, here I am, Lord. Use me as you see, please. Not those who will come on Monday and we couldn't see them on Wednesday. And then on Thursday, they are full of excuses. And then on Sunday, they come late. And pastor has to preach and preach and preach until he takes vitamin at the end of the service before they pay their tithe. God is looking for those kind of men who will stand firm and say, Pastor, what is next to do? What can we do next? What is the next job to do? God is a skillful warrior. Very strategic in nature. Calculating in his way. He does not shoot to miss. He does not aim to miss. He's purposeful when it comes to battle. He knows the measure of weapon to bring to battle. Unlike you and me. Amen. Unlike America and North Korea. Amen. We were stockpiling all kind of fighter jets. And we're buying bombs. And President Trump said, we, got the, we have a bigger red button. Our button is bigger than yours. We got a bomb like never before. There, nobody has a bomb like us. And then God says, oh yeah, let's see you use it against coronavirus. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Bring your bomb now. Let's see how your bomb is going to stop coronavirus. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Bless the name of the Lord. Uh, they are saying that they have weapon of mass destruction. And then coronavirus came within one year, 600,000 people dead. 600,000. That's a lot. 600,000 of anything is a lot. And people are still there. God never fights to lose. <laughs> He's a screamful warrior. Many Christians, they fight hard, hard, only to lose at the end. Let me tell you five of the reasons why, why men fail in battle. Number one, they have no business fighting in that battle to begin with. Jehoshaphat was about to fight that kind of battle. Amen. Three nations came against him. The Moabites, the Ammonites, and the people of Manseah. They came against Jehoshaphat and the host of Judah. And the Bible said, come on, somebody say the Bible said. <laughs> Upon Jehaziel, the son of Jeremiah, Hallelujah. I'm sorry, Zechariah. The son of Zechariah. Of the tribe of Levi came the Holy Spirit of God. And the Lord spoke to him and said, Say to my son, Jehoshaphat, this battle doesn't belong to you. Stay back. Many of you have been fighting battle that doesn't belong to you. <laughs> You've been fighting the wrong battle. When you fight the wrong battle, you get the wrong result. Hallelujah. Number two reason, because they are not fully engaged to do battle. Amen. I love many Christians when they pray, pray fire prayer. Oh God, arise. Let them stumble and fall. And then when you say, let's fast for three days, they say, ah, pastor. Ah. Can we break at 12? Hallelujah. <laughs> they are not fully prepared to engage. Number three, they apply the wrong battle for the wrong warfare. Goliath came to battle against David. He had on his armor. He had a javelin on. He was fully suited. The best armor of his time. Goliath, a warrior, he came against David and the host of Israel. David said, you came against me with all these materials. Javelin, but I come against you. In the name of God of Israel, uh, whom you have defied, says today I will kill you. Says today I will cut off your head. Today I will feed your carcass to the birds of the air. He prophesied and that was the way it went. Goliath came with the wrong weapon. Number four, reason why men fell in battle. They are not battle ready. Because the content of their hearts are wrong. 
Amen. I shared this with my um, with the prayer warriors about maybe three weeks ago. Where I heard this testimony about a man of God who took one of his son to go to the, pray for this man who was uh, mentally ill. He had some demons that that's been tormenting him, and this man is just very strong. And they've done everything they can to, to stop him, and they cannot stop him. And so this son said to, to the, the serious man of God, he says, I have seen you perform many miracles. I want to hang with you. I want to go with you. This day, the man of God said, come, let's go. They got to the man. And the man of God laid hand on him and says, go ahead and pray. Pray for the man who is crazy. And he began to pray, and the man was looking at him. He began to pray, and the man was looking at him. The man. And the man for whom they were praying just lift up his hand and roll it and roll it and roll it and gave him a anointed slap and go, Wah! You have come to pray for me. Who are you? Hallelujah. <laughs> and the young pastor said, Oh, yeah? That's the way you're going to play it. <laughs> I got something for you. <laughs> he rolled his hand too and rolled it and rolled it and goes. He, <laughs> and the madman began to laugh. He began to laugh. He sat down and began to laugh and laugh. And the man of God says, the one who brought me, said, why are you laughing? He said, look at who you brought to come and pray for me. He has his own demon of anger. He has not even resolved his own demon of anger. He's coming to pray for me. <laughs> Many of us have our own issues. <laughs> now you are asking, you are trying to bind and lose when you, when you have not seen a fight that you are not ready to fight. As a matter of fact, when you are fighting the month, they say, oh, Tito, that is when your bone just say, ah, today, not today. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus said you cannot fight mammon. You cannot drive out mammon with mammon. It takes light to drive out darkness. It takes love to overcome hate. Number five, because of time. Because they fail in battle because they engage in battle for the wrong reason. They say, God, when I go there and I pray and that man is healed, everybody will come, they will know me, and then they will follow me, and I will be popular. God did not call you to be popular. Elijah was never popular. Elisha was never popular. Jesus Christ, there was nothing popular about him. As a matter of fact, he was so unpopular, they nailed him to the cross. But God, come on, somebody say it again. Say, God, our God is a warrior. Deliberate in action. Precise in his target. He is God. He is good. He has been before time. He will continue to be after time. He knew you before you were formed. Before you were fashioned. Before you became a reality in your mother. God knew who you are. And he knew who you will become. He is God. Like a, every warrior. God also has a battle plan. In some of God's battle plan, you will see number one in Deuteronomy 20. And when you have time, I want you to read Deuteronomy 20. God specifically told Israel what to do when it comes to battle. In fact, in verse 1, it says, when you go out to battle against your enemy, and you see their horses, and you see their chariots, and the people who are more numerous than you, they have more men than you. Hallelujah. Do not be afraid of them. Come on, somebody say rule number one. In battle. It does not matter the type of weapon the enemy brings against you in battle. Do not be afraid of them. David refused to be afraid of Goliath. He says, for the Lord your God is he who is with you. Who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Now why did God say they should not be afraid? Verse 4 says, For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to do what? 
To do what? First Peter 5, 8 to 10. I love that. First Peter 5, 8 to 10. It says, be sober. Come on, tell your neighbor, be sober. Come on, they can hear you. Say, be sober. Uh, you want to know what Peter meant when he said, be sober? Say, start fasting. Hallelujah. Uh, bless the name of the Lord. Live a fasted life. Be sober. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may. Why do you think he's doing that? How come he just doesn't grab somebody and devour them? Because he's looking for people without the mark of Jesus on their forehead. Because he knows that if he dares touch the son of God, he is done. His, his kingdom is, re is wrecked. So he's looking for whom he may devour. So be sober. That is a great battle plan from God. So the scripture, men, men of honor, God is, is, is looking for you to say, here I am, just like Jesus Christ says, send me. He's looking for somebody who is willing. Come on, somebody say willing. So I pray for you, men of honor, that in the day of battle, you will be willing in the name of Jesus Christ. You will be willing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Many people even tell this fallacy and this lie nowadays. They say, God is not that. Why are you killing yourself? Come on, God is not that Roro. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. It is not about God being Roro. It's about your destiny not being wasted. Hallelujah. How many people know that if you're not careful and you're just like a desicle and you allow some witch to destroy you, the witch two years later will come and give his life to, uh, her life to Christ and God will say, you are forgiven, keep on living. In the meanwhile, they have damaged that destiny. Powers that wants to damage your destiny. The Lord will make them fail in the name of Jesus Christ. God is looking for somebody who is willing, man of honor. Not able because you are able already. The ability is in you. It is just about being willing. And the Bible says if you are willing and you obey, you will enjoy the good of the land. Somebody who is willing. To be willing means to be ready to spend your money. To be ready to spend your time. To be ready to spend your treasure. Then God will see you as, uh, as his battle axe. And he will be able to take you and begin to use you. It is one thing for you to be able. I know that we are all able. But most of us who are able are not available. And most of us who are available are not usable. We have dipped our hand in too much that God said to, to us just like David. I'm sorry you have too much blood in your hand I cannot use. You will not build a house for me. Your son will have to. Being able is great. Being available is awesome. It's another level altogether to be usable. But when you allow God to use you, you are free from the abuse of the enemy. The enemy cannot abuse you. I'm not saying the enemy will not try, but they will fail. As a matter of fact, for every temptation, for every trial, it will lead you to a new level of promotion. I know what I'm talking about. Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. As much as God has all these beautiful weapons, massive weapons, he's looking for a vessel to use. Man of honor. Will you allow yourself to be that vessel? Just like you needed Jeremiah, he said, with you, I will destroy governors and rulers. With you, I will destroy nations and provinces. With you, I will break down the citadel of darkness. God is looking to use you, men of honor. It is a known fact that in every church, the women do more than the men. The women are the ones that you will see when it's time to pray. They will come in in droves. They will be the first to be there and the last to leave. And the men will stroll in and say, yes, we are here again. We are here again. Father, we are here. Where were you? Bolulo. Where did you go? 
bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. How can God use you? How can God fall in love with you? It starts in the place of obedience. Being broken. Hallelujah. For you do not delight in sacrifice. Hence will I bring it. You do not delight in sacrifice. Otherwise I would have brought it. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and a contrite heart. Thou will not despise. Too many men walking with ego upon their shoulder. You can almost see the ego on the shoulder. Hallelujah. Amen. They will not do, but people who are doing, they will criticize. That will not be you, men of honor, in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of, some of those kind of men even think, I'm glad it's not in this church. And it's not in the house of praise and prayer either. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Some will even think that because they are older than pastor, then they can talk down to a pastor. Or maybe they know how to blow a little bit of grammar. Amen? The conglomeration of the atmospheric pressure is equal to the totality of the... What are you talking about? Just speak to us. Just talk to us. Just talk to... Come on, somebody say, just talk to us. Uh -uh. They say, Pastor, do you know who you are talking to? Hallelujah. Do you know? Do you know who you are talking to? One pastor has put all, everything he knew how to do in the one, one sermon one day. And he delivered the sermon sweating. And when he was done delivering the sermon, one woman said, you know what, Pastor? I wish we'd do a better job with your preaching. I'm not moved at all. Pastor said, ah, I'm sorry. That's how I know how to do it. Hallelujah. I pray, men of honor, you will not be the one that will deflate the spirit of the pastor in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen to me well. God has no respect for your skill if you have no respect for God. None. None at all. If you are disobedient to your spiritual head, you are disobedient to God. And God said unto him, Samuel, leave them alone. Go and appoint a king for them. You are not the one that they have uh, refused or rejected. It is I, God, that they rejected. Go ahead and choose for them. You want to be a God, you want to be God's battle axe? Then you want to see. Um, let me just read this to you and then I'll, I'll go sit down because of time. Second Corinthians 6. Second Corinthians 6. This is Paul, the apostle, writing to the church in Corinth. And in verse 3, he says, Well, you see what he says in, in verse 1 that he is a worker. By the time we get to verse 3, he says, we give no offense in anything. What does that mean? We don't get angry in anything. We don't get angry. We're going to continue to do the work of the Lord. That our ministry may not be blamed. We give no offense. And in verse 4, he says, but in all things, we commend ourselves as ministers of God. Men of honor, you are ministers of God. You lead your wife to church and your sons and daughters to church. The best education you can give them is the education of your attitude and your ways. Hallelujah. Many men will say, do what I say. Don't worry about what I do. Once in a while I say that too, so pastor. Amen. When I say, why are you wearing shoes on my, on, my, on my floor? The kid will say, no, it's not your floor. It's our floor. I say, no, it's my floor. Amen. They say, but daddy, you are wearing shoes. I say, oh, oh, me look, Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. But in all things, we commend ourselves as ministers of God. In much patience. Men of honor, these are the attitudes that God is expecting of you going forward. In much patience. In tribulation, when things are tough, when times are rough. In need, in distresses. We commend ourselves. 
in stripes. In what, what does that mean there? In stripes. Hallelujah. You know that Paul the Apostle, they, when they when they lay lashes in his back, that's what he meant by in, in stripes. There's a Roman, uh, there's a Jewish law that you cannot lash a person more than, you know, maybe 39 or, or 40 times. Amen? But what these wicked ones will do is they will take hold of Apostle Paul uh, and then begin to lash his back. So he has stripes all over his back. Even in imprisonment, in tumult, in labor, in sleeplessness. Come on, somebody say sleeplessness. sleeplessness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then in fastings, we commend ourselves. We continue to do the work. When pastor said, let's go, let's go. We have the, the next seven days we have to fast because something is going on the horizon. now. Hallelujah. That we need to kind of plug into so that God can bless us. Amen. The best thing that can happen to that man of God or that woman of God is for everybody to say, yes, let's go. When people start to argue and go back here and discuss, I don't know. I'm glad that God did not form a committee before he decided to give us Jesus Christ. Because the committee will still be talking till today. Jesus won't come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In fasting. And then verse 6, it says, by purity, by purity, set yourself pure. Set your mind pure. Don't pollute your mind. Don't pollute yourself. Anyone who is polluted or defiled, God has no need of you. God has no need of you. You are coming to God, to the service of God. Amen. And you have already taken your shot or two. Amen. And then as soon as the service starts, and then you begin to sing and dance different. And people say, ah, this brother can praise God. Now lie. He's moving under a different kind of spirit. Not the Holy Spirit. By knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, and by sincere love. This is what God is expecting of you, men of honor. When you begin to operate in this demeanor, you become God's battle axe. Amen. When there is a need to set a people free, God will count on you. Amen. A problem that many, many people have prayed and fasted over. When they bring it to you, God will effect solution just like that. Because you are standing firm in the will of God. Hallelujah. And the glory of the Lord will be shining mightily upon you. And because you are a wise man of honor, you return it. You don't keep the glory. You return it back to God. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, if you have been saying this, I pray that you won't say it anymore. Many people will say, if I'm not there anyway, it won't get done. I'm going to say this and then drop my mic. Yes. Yes. Listen. God kept Eli. Even though he was through with him. God had been done with Eli for a long time. Old. You know, you all know prophet Eli, right? Right? God was done with Eli a long time ago, but he kept him there. Why do you think he kept him? Because he has not found a suitable replacement. Many people are occupying the spot right now because God has not found a suitable replacement. <laughs> but the day Samuel grew up, <laughs> I say, you've got to go, bro. You've got all that young God that you are making. That if you are not there, it will not be done. <laughs> now, you see somebody who is less influential than you. Somebody who does not speak as big grammar as you. They will come there and they will say, praise the Lord. And the whole place will be filled. Nobody, there will be nowhere to, for people to sit anymore. Hallelujah. Honor God with your talent. Honor God with your time. Men of honor, honor God with your treasure. And the Lord will lift you high. Shall we please rise up on our feet? Put those hands together for the name of the Lord. Amen. If I be blessed when I shout hallelujah. The word of God shall manifest in your life in Jesus' name. 
you will not be here only you will be doing what is what in Jesus name in Jesus mighty name we pray daddy thank you sir more anointing in Jesus name your anointing will never run dry in Jesus name God will come to lift you up we're going to lift your ministry up in Jesus name he will use you beyond your imagination in Jesus name in Jesus mighty name we pray amen Thank you, my pastor. Uh, pastor Kumbari, thank you very much, sir. We bless you. You said you are coming back again. You are coming back tomorrow at 12 noon. <laughs> the opening prayer for the seminar tomorrow by Pastor Kumbari. My wife is saying representative, but I'm not going to for at 12 noon. Eminio lo ogo reolua. Thank you very much, my brother. I have been saying the Spirit of God is in this church. Even some guest speakers, when you usher them here, you will feel it from what they are saying that the Spirit of God is here. When Pastor Gumbadi was talking about fishing, I was telling one of my sisters that the Spirit of God is here. Immediately took by Jalini to down. He was saying that Nigerians will not do fishing here. They will only go to war market to buy fish. I've been in America for almost 23 years. What I witnessed today, Pastor, now if you pack. <laughs> I <laughs> I took somebody to I be park on lecture and I saw conservation police like boo, boo, boo. And I saw a truck like this with one black young guy with a very big fish, very big one. What's the social bear truck? And I was asking my client, said, what, what happened? He said, he's going to get a ticket. I'm like, why? He said, because he doesn't have the license to, to, to do the fishing here. And this is not the right place. And I said, eh. So the ticket, well, maybe they will just pardon him and give him $60 ticket. One phone ticket. And very cheap ticket. $500. Me, you can on Chicago. Jesus, Luawa. Every time, Embajelis, yes. She, you go. Oh, Logon, Lua. Oh, Logon, Lua. Oh, Lua, Ni, Oru, Corre. Oh, Logon. Lolua, O Logun Lolua, O Logun Lolua, O Lua Ni Oru Kore, O Logun Lolua. We have had, amen, we have had so much about the weapons of God, how he fights his battle. Now, one of the weapons you can tap from God is given to God. So I want you to dip your hands in your pocket and bring God out something tangible and present it to the Lord. It's offering time. Amen. Thank you, Evangelist.
me well. Come and join me, sing hallelujah. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah. Emi o ko kikire oluwa iwo ni o da mi ni le iwo ni ko je ki o ta yo mi o ko ni poruka i ola i ola o ko ni buwa Men's conventions means men gathering together to praise the Lord annually, to thank him for what he has done in the past, what he is doing right now, and what he will do in the future. Father, we are here tonight to bless your name. Be thou exalted. Be thou exalted. Be thou exalted. Father, we have brought this token to you. Accept it in the mighty name of Jesus. Accept our offering and accept our us in the mighty name of Jesus. Let this offering be a sweet-smelling savour in your nose in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless us in return and let your name be glorified. We sanctify the offering in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. This will be used for the propagation of your kingdom on earth in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you, Evangelist Sumanke. Thank you, our Evangelist uh, from me, King of Obakoma. God bless you all. Uh, again, please, all men present here tonight, and those that are watching us online, even if you are in Nigeria, please be here tomorrow at by 12 noon. If you are here in the sanctuary with us, if you are watching online, anywhere you are watching us online, be here tomorrow at 12 noon. 
Somebody say amen. amen. It is signed and sealed. It shall be well with us in Jesus' name. Hmm. When my brother was praying about um, an offering and he said, um, men of honor, from last year till now, and the Spirit of God was saying, Urija, you will thank God for your life. Um, as the president of men of honor of this great ministry, I say, Lord, I thank you. And I have no, I have no cause to mourn over any my members, the men of this ministry, <laughs> that we are doing this tonight. I did not invite Pastor Ladile or Pastor Gumbode to say, let's go and visit one of my members in the prison yard or in the hospital. Can you please help me shout three thunderous hallelujah for this? Let's go. Amen. Amen. Because that one alone is for me to really roll on the floor. Since last year convention, when we don't bend, Simraja the quaking bee was late. By the time I listened to the voice, a friend of mine, Jesu Luawa. But I thank God that I'm in this ministry. I want to hear Ukbo. Thank God. And as this year is going to an end in this ministry, in Overcomers Church, and all other churches that are closer to God, we will not miss any one of us. So, on behalf of um, our general overseer, our daddy in the Lord, Reverend J.S. Oladile, and Mommy Jill, Reverend C. Oladile, and my pastor. I say thank you for coming, but I'm not in position to say the vote of thanks. So I'm going to call on my vice, the vice president of Men of Honor Evangelist, Dr. Johnson, to please do the vote of thanks before I usher in our daddy for prophetic close, closing prayer and benediction. Evangelist, Dr. Johnson, vote of thanks. Praise the Lord. President just put me on the spot. <laughs> Praise the living Jesus. Well, um, I want to appreciate everybody that's here this evening. I want to thank God because you took time out of no time to come celebrate the man. And as you've celebrated with us, things of joy will not cease in your home in Jesus' name. On behalf of my pastor, Pastor Olashe <laughs> Oluawi Oladele. I'm not old enough to thank you on behalf of Daddy Gio, but I still want to say thank you so much. We really do appreciate you. And we beg, we implore that you join us tomorrow at noon. It's just going to be for two hours for another wonderful and awesome time in God's presence. And as you're going back home, may the good Lord go with you. You will not know shame. You will not sleep the sleep of death and it shall be well with you. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us. God bless you all. Amen. 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 One old woman called me this afternoon that she was in my church 2018. That I, uh, it was there 2018, it was there 2019. That twice that he visited my church during our convention, said, Oriya Jogu, Oman Shim, Kongkong Church, I won't believe for long, long run. When what is it, man? That you honor God, you respect the anointing upon your Jew. And when daddy is coming to the altar, then I have done it in your church twice and it works for me. I said, what, mom? And she told me. And that is, as our daddy is coming to the altar to bless us, 
stand up and stretch your hand to the altar. Stand up and stretch your hands to the altar. And begin to pray. And ask for that that you believe God will do before the end of this year. Just keep on praying. Just keep on praying. Please, keep on praying. Open your eyes and look at me. When our daddy got here, just point one finger to him and begin to ask for what you want. Amen. Just keep on praying. When he gets here, point your hand to him. And say, Lord, our pastor just talk about battle. Lord, you who fought the battle of the general overseer of this church, fight my battle for me. Pray! As I welcome our daddy, Reverend J.S. Olalele, to this podium, pray to him on the altar and say, Lord, you who fought the battle of this, our father, for him to be alive today, for him to be a successor to him, for him to be victorious, for him to be overcomer, fight my battle for me. Daddy, you are welcome on the podium. Keep on praying. And it will work for you if only you believe. The man of God is there. Talk to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Somebody praise the Lord. Somebody praise the Lord. Uh, with faith, your prayer is already heard. Please sit down. Well, uh, it can never be overseen. If I say that um, the anointing of God in the life of our handsome pastor there's nothing to compare with it. We really appreciate you sir. It's wonderful. Is that many things? Is that for God, God's success. God will never lower his standard in order to accommodate you. You have to raise your standard to for him to accommodate you. He said, God told the value you are going to be my what? What? Before you can be part of us, you have to be holy. And he had mentioned a series of holiness. Well, we need person like this to preach in the modern world. This is the kind of thing we need. The one or two, because this one will soon come. All the incredible preaching, <laughs> coconut preaching, they don't hold water. Praise the Lord. He said, You have to humble yourself so that they can, people can see the form of God in your life. I notice all that they have said, you not allow me to sleep again. You understand what I mean? Yes, what, what, what I mean? Yes, what I have to preach on Sunday. Is it what you have done now? <laughs> eh? <laughs> he refused to leave anything down for me. Eh? <laughs> More anointing, sir. God bless you. Can we all rise up and pray for our pastor and his family as a ministry that Holy Spirit will continue to guide him? As he receives honor in this ministry today, may he receive honor throughout his lifetime. Let's pray for him.
Amen. Amen. We see the prayer with the blood of Jesus Christ. On that day, may your name and your family and every member of your ministry today and tomorrow will receive the grace of God. We enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus mighty name I pray. Somebody praise the Lord. Somebody praise the Lord. I congratulate men of honor. You are wonderful. You have started well with a good pastor. You have started well. That's where it well. Um, the president asked us to come tomorrow. And he asked us to be here by by what? Please don't fail. Um, without mothers, there's no men. So both you, all of you are invited tomorrow, please. Especially the, the past president, the current president, everyone must be here tomorrow. Like um, the yard uh, uh, here. Who is yard here? They will be here tomorrow to honor their men. Uh, praise the Lord. Um, Pastor said that uh, you must raise up your standard to meet the demand of God. Do you know that um, God provides food for every bed, Abby? Eh? But not in its own nest. They have to live on it. Say a prayer before you leave today. Say something. Pastor said, God is looking for somebody to look, to use for his own battle art. Amen. Can I say this song before we go? Sit louder. Amen. Let's share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sufferings of the Holy Spirit. Pray and abide with us now, forever and ever. Amen. Surely, the goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. Shall dwell in the house of the Lord, forever and ever. Can we give him three heavenly hallelujahs? Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Um, on behalf of the pastor of the church, on behalf of the men of glory, I say welcome to my people from Commerce Church. You are welcome. God bless you. Uh, please.